This is the Keychron Q60. In my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful pre-built keyboards to come out of 2022 that sadly not many people are talking about. In typical Keychron fashion, the unboxing experience was exceptional. The box was sturdy, everything was tucked away and organized neatly with spacers, and I know this might sound silly, even the font on the plastic bag holding the keyboard left an impression on me. I also really like the milky color of this cable for some reason. We get some spare keycaps for both Windows and Mac users, and also some spare components. Maybe it's because I've been using too many plastic keyboards, but this Q60 feels really heavy. It weighs almost three and a half pounds. Underneath the quick start guide, you'll find a mini screwdriver, a keycap puller, a hex key for the case screws, and a switch puller. The Q60 has this retro nostalgic look to it that I really admire. The finishing of the aluminum case is amazing. I really like the thick bezels, and again, the weight of the board just gives you this impression that you're holding a quality product. My version of the Q60 came with Gateron G Pro red switches, which are factory lubed and actually pretty smooth right out of the box. The keycaps are also really nice. They're Cherry Profile Die Sub PBT keycaps that are also fairly thick at about 1.3 to 1.5 millimeters. Here's an overview of the different RGB lighting options. There's quite a few, so if this doesn't interest you, please skip ahead to the next section for the stock typing test.
So without any mods, the typing experience is already quite nice. There is a modest amount of bounce from the gasket mount as you can see here. Keychron has also implemented what they call a double gasket design, where additional silicone gaskets are positioned between the top and bottom cases to reduce resonance in the case. The one thing you will want to do with the Q60 is relooping the stabilizers, especially the space bar, which was just extra rattly in the version I received. No big deal though, because this keyboard is really easy to take apart and put back together. The only mod I'll be doing right now is wiping off the factory loop from the stabilizers and re-lubing them the way I prefer. You won't need your own tape mod either because it's actually already done for you. After opening it up, we can see that there's a layer of foam between the PCB and the steel plate. Here we can also see the gasket material, which is very compressible and is what provides the keyboard with that bouncy typing experience. I'll be using Crytox 205G0 for the stabilizer housings and dielectric grease for the wires. The factory lube kind of got everywhere, so I'm just doing my best to wipe off as much as possible before reapplying my own lube. And that's it. Here's a sound test with re-lubed stabilizers and some aqua cream yellow switches that I swapped in. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments.